What's up, YouTube? It's Zapdos TCG here, and welcome back to our TCG video on my channel. On this channel, you get tons of Pokemon TCG content, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel so you don't miss out. And also click that little notification bell so you get updated automatically when a new video hits the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the top 10 best choices for the Pokemon TCG World Championships and, of course, the upcoming season when Shrouded Fable is released. Shrouded Fable releases on the August uh, 2nd, and uh, within two weeks, it will be legal for tournament play. So first tournament uh, that it will be legal in is going to be the World Championships over in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'll be attending that tournament as well and I have tested quite a bit. I have tons of hours with practice into it. So I'm going to talk about my personal top 10 best choices. So if you want to be doing well at the event or you want to be doing well uh, when the, sh uh, the set is uh, yeah globally released and uh, of course ch get collecting some championship points for the upcoming season as soon as the uh, set is legal on uh, August 16, then you're going to be want to be uh, watching this video. Also, you can already start uh, using proxies from PokemonProxies.com if you want to, of course, uh, play test with these before the set actually releases. We did content on Shrouded Fable before, think about uh, talking about the top 10 best cards, thinking about uh, yeah the tier list prediction and all that stuff, but now it is serious. We're going to be talking about the top 10 best deck lists, uh, or actually best decks in that uh, order uh, for the Pokemon World Championship. So if you guys are excited, let me know by rocking the hell out the like button helps out in ridiculous ways. Uh, without further ado, let's start off with number 10 being Greninja EX. Greninja EX is uh, sliding here on the number 10 spot. It does come packed with uh, some new cards with Dust Noir. I think Dust Noir really makes this deck uh, pop off. You can use the Shinobi Blade, get in any card you want from the deck, and with the help of something like Dust Clubs or Dust Noir, you instantly have access to cards like Counter Catcher and, of course, stuff like Iono. The cool thing with this deck is that it does play a couple of DTE, so you can attack with Blood Moon or Saluna when the opponent least expects it. And uh, another great thing about this list is that you can knock out a Mana Fee with the Dust Noir and then go for a Barrage attack to then take down more Pokemon. So I think this is very great indeed. Definitely if you combine that with Lost City, preying on the weak Pokemon and hoping they will never come back. And your late game sweeper is Blood Moon or Saluna. You have additional draw power with, of course, the Pheasantipity uh, EX, which actually is uh, in almost a lot of these lists because it's just that powerful draw. Drawing three cards, uh, Pokemon got knocked out during the opponent's last turn. And that's going to be game-breaking indeed because you're protected against opponents using Iono and Roxanne and uh, Unfair Stamp against you. So, very solid list. Greninja Pidgeot gets a lot of new cards from Shroud of Abel and slides here on the number 10 spot. Number 9 is going to be Maridon. Maridon is still viable even though Charizard is uh, going to be on the radar once again. The Maridon deck is still great because of the turn 1 MP very much. When this deck goes second, you have cards like Squackability to dig through the deck. You have cards like for example Radiant Grinch to dig a little bit deeper and you now have the new uh, uh, stadium card allowing you to put the nightly tower or whatever it's called putting a card from your hand on top of the deck this is actually great for Iono protection in general, but it's going to help you out to hit those electric generators more successfully. If you already uh, make sure there's a lightning energy on top of the deck, then things could go uh, very correctly your way. And uh, with cards like, for example, uh, the Tatsugiri, finding stuff like uh, your Research or your Arvin, you're going to have a consistent deck. And uh, you always don't, you don't mind going first and you don't mind going second. That's very great. You also can finish games off very easily with this deck and you're not going to be tying that oftenly, which is great for the World Championship as you need to, of course, win six rounds out of the eight during day one. So uh, Maradon just barely hanging in there on the number nine spot. And for the new cards being introduced in Shroud of Fable, it's actually going to be that new stadium card uh, as a one-off in this list, which is actually super damn great. Moving forward, number eight is going to be Chimpao. Has dropped off quite ridiculously. And uh, the reason for that is that it uh, still play, plays uh, weak HP Pokemon and Dracapult is still popular. And I think it's going to be great at the World Championships. On the other hand, there is also the uh, threat of something like a Dustmore being able to uh, knock out a little uh, Frigi Bags and then they can counter catch up something like Backscalibur and get rid of your energy acceleration altogether. So that's always super scary. Definitely if Lost City gets uh, thrown up in the combination. That's why I think playing a Palkia is not bad. It actually can allow you to power yourself up and uh, you do have a very nice low energy efficient Pokemon which is helping the deck quite ridiculously. Also with this list we do see uh, the Pheasantipity EX here. Instead of playing B-Barrel we're relying on this draw power. There's a ton of two prices on the field 
shield already and uh, yeah I think it's not bad it actually makes room to actually get that uh, Palkia thrown up in this list as well tons of Nas balls over a bunch of buddy buddy puffins because this list actually will be able uh, to uh, uh, go very quickly uh, going second because it actually plays three copies of Poke Gear and uh, combined with like Poke Stop you can uh, hope you can find Poke Gear Poke Gear finds Irida Irida finds buddy buddy puffin Greninja and off you go so this list doesn't mind going second and that's why I uh, really like the Pheasant Deputy thrown up in this list. And with the help of Palpat, you can get your supporters back as well. And I love the one-off boss in here as well. So, Chimpao has low HP, Frigy Baxes, but can uh, counteract with something like a Palkia V-Star, which actually is great against uh, decks like, for example, uh, Reggie Draco V-Star. So, Chimpao, will it be successful? Who knows? Chimpao is here to stay. Then we're gonna go to number seven here, uh, Roaring Moon EX. Personally, one of my favorite decks from uh, this uh, era because you can go on, on the very offensive attack here, turn one, going second, going for that Calamity Storm or uh, actually going for the Frangid Gouging. Four Poke Stop in here, making it turbo. You have the Nightly Stretcher to get back your Darkrai V-Star, which was the puzzle piece it missed out. And you even have the Pheasant Dippity. Don't sleep on Pheasant Dippity because you can also power that up through the means of Dark Patch and Snipe for your last couple of prize cards or actually finish off some stuff which is actually super nice uh, the prime catcher and of course a bunch of sawdust in here is gonna help out so soda attachment ninja you know uh, squack ability part of the squad as well and with mu ex and pheasant Dippity on board you will always have six cards even if you get knocked out and roaring moon most of the time is the threat there's still some water type energies in here if you want to know how many there are there's actually three water type energies here and that's gonna allow you to sometimes miraculously attack with radiant greninja when the opponent least expects it Number six goes to Lugia V-Star. I'm gonna be honest, Lugia V-Star doesn't actually need any cards from Shroud of Fable. So if you're planning to play Lugia Worlds, you're already uh, safe with this exact 60. Having Chinchino is great. There's only 70 HP Chinchinos in here because I think, uh, yeah, the uh, Dracapults will be uh, around in a lot of these deck lists. So Jamming Tower helping out against uh, Forest Seal Stones from uh, setup based decks, but also helps out against uh, the... Uh, tool cards that Gardevoir players are using. So uh, Legacy Energy turns Iron Hands into a one prize. Uh, Pokemon taking two prize cards, very crazy. I don't mind about your energy count because you have Blood Moon or Saluna. When Lugia pops off, it's just one of the best decks there is. Then to the top five, here we have Raging Bolt. Uh, Raging Bolt is a very fast deck. It can also attack on the very first turn going second and it does gain the new friend Pheasant Dippity EX and the Nightly Stretcher. Nightly Stretcher can get a basic energy from the Discard Pile or a Pokemon of your choosing. Very great because with Pokestop and all that stuff, sometimes you do uh, discard cards you do not want and you can get back stuff like your one prize Sandy Shocks to deal with Mimikyu or your Cornerstone uh, Ogre Pond EX, which I think is a very great choice seeing as Charizard is getting a lot of popularity. You can of course use that Cornerstone to wall off an entire Charizard deck, which is totally awesome awesome indeed. With the help of Prime Catcher and a, a bunch of regular Pokemon catchers, you're going to be uh, catching the opponent off guard. You see what I did there? Uh, you're going to be able to uh, attack uh, their uh, Pokemon on the very first turn going second, even when they're on the bench, which is very crazy indeed. So another fast, aggressive deck. And with the Teal Mask, you draw cards uh, consistently. Now, number four goes to Gardevoir. Also doesn't uh, play any new cards from the Shroud of Fable set. And uh, yeah, it is actually still a very solid deck. You have the Klefki, you have the Fluttermane, you have the Screamtail, you have the Drifloon. And uh, with TM Evo, you get yourself started right from the get-go. I think Unfair Stamp is probably better than playing stuff like the Hyper Aroma. I'm in the Unfair Stamp camp uh, with uh, the Ace Pack card of choice for Gardevoir. Instead of going for like uh, Temple of Sinnohs or Collapse or anything, I actually went for two copies of the Artisan. On, making the deck really really consistent because you really need to of course get your setup going otherwise you lose and uh, which, uh, this is a very consistent 60 if you want to be cutting down one card maybe a one of a Viono could get you there uh, or maybe a, a one copy of the darkness energy but this is a consistent list with two copies of monkey dory because I think a turn two Mon uh, monkey dory Gardevoir EX attack is actually super nice definitely if a Gardevoir player goes second you can already establish two curlia and then instantly start attacking because uh, Gardevoir EX with a monkey dory slaps 220 which is uh, the number you need to hit for a uh, basic V and basic EX Pokemon. It also does the numbers well with Drifloon. 
Then the third spot goes to Dracapult EX with Pidget. Uh, people are saying this deck is not good, but with Dustnor, with the uh, Pheasantipity EX, it actually is going to be one of the stronger decks out there. Knight, uh, yeah, the Phantom Dive actually slaps 200 to the active and 6 damage counters uh, across your opponent's field on the bench, which is very powerful if you combine that with, of course, Dust Gloves or Dustnor. You blow those up and you're going to immediately have access to comeback cards, which is great, like Counter Catcher, for example. And with so much spread around, Around, you can bench wipe an entire uh, field of Pokemon if you place your damage counters correctly. Pidgeot can get you any card you want, even if you want the Mala for some additional energy uh, acceleration. And there is a jamming tower in here to block uh, yeah, the Guard War players from going too nuts. So uh, yeah, Dracapult, it's going to be around for sure. Number two for me is another Dracapult deck in the form of Reggie Draco V-Star. It finally gains all the puzzle pieces it needs. It finally gains Kyurem. Kyurem can slap 110 damage to all of, uh, yeah, to three of the opponent's Pokemon of your choosing. You have to discard all energies attached to it and you can co copy that with Apex Dragon, making this deck really scary. If you cannot set up Manaphy in time, you can get Bench Wipe. So uh, very scary indeed. And it's also the reason why stuff like, for example, Lost Box has fallen out of the top 10 because of the power of the Kyurem. I think personally, Kyurem will be uh, yeah right at home with the uh, Regidraco V Star deck, and uh, you can choose uh, between slapping down like a Regidraco uh, combination with uh, Raging Bolt and just drop off the Giratina V Star in this list. But uh, that also means that you can start with, which is I think a little bit less ideal. Even though you do play Scoop Up uh, yeah, Cologne, actually Scoop Up Cyclone, yeah, that's the one, the Ace Pack card of choice. You can even switch that for Prime Catcher, but then your Raging Bolt matchup becomes horrendous. And also, it does help out if you do happen to start with something like for example the halucha and uh, with this uh, scoop up cyclone you can also get your squack ability uh, to scoot skedel out of there there's even the hasuin heavy ball here to fetch cards like kyurem or the uh, pheasantipity which i think is really strong in testing pheasantipity has not uh yeah um underperformed it has a very great card indeed uh, with two nightly stretchers you don't have to worry about uh, your resources getting discarded so, moving forward, the number one deck in the uh, Shroud of Fable Worlds format is going to be Charizard. Charizard didn't perform all that well at NEIC. It did perform okay over at the uh, other side of the world in Japan, but it was still not the dominance uh, it uh, once was. But now, when you can cut cards like be barreled down to include stuff like the uh, Pheasantivity uh, and actually having access to Dustnord to activate cards like Countercatcher instantly to attack uh, a little bit earlier with Radiant Zard or just to dish out more damage with Charizard, Charizard is now a threat to be de uh, dealt with. It's a very strong 60. I have to Tested this out myself and it's very very strong did a deck profile on it as well you have quick search to get any card you want you can get combinations going with of course stuff like dust noir vacuum and attacking with charizard to make sure you can get four prize cards against stuff like gardevoir so stuff is looking great for charizard you have all the tools in the world to make sure this can respond to any deck in the format and i think this is going to be the deck to beat at worlds but now I want to hear your opinion down below. Do you think it's strange that almost every 60 is playing Pheasantipity? What is going to be happening with the decks that fall out of the top 10? Uh, I want to hear your opinion down below. This is my personal top 10 best decks for Worlds. I uh, have all these sleeved up and I'm actually testing uh, as we speak. So uh, I'm actually leaving for uh, the trip to Honolulu in next week already. So I'll be there very early to test a little bit more to just travel and all that good stuff. So you're going to be hearing more about uh, the testing and all that uh, on the socials. Definitely head over to uh, Twitter, uh, head over to uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. You're going to be hearing more about uh, the story to Honolulu uh, on those. And um, thank you all for watching this video. Uh, hopefully you guys had a blast already this season. Uh, we're going to be having a celebration over in Honolulu, Hawaii. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, the weather will be great. The deck list will be great. The experience will be great. And I'll be telling it all about it, uh, in, uh, of course, on the channel. So uh, subscribe so you don't miss out. And let me know in the comments what your personal favorite deck is when Shroud of Fable will be released. It's a small sack, but oh boy, does it pack a punch with stuff like Dustnor, Curum, and of course, the Pheasantipity EX. Have yourself a fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you guys soon with more Pokemon TCG content. Peace.